Hello everybody, welcome to Trassy Learning Chemistry videos. Today we'll be discussing about calorimetry and in that we'll be covering the practice problems related to heat capacity and specific heat capacity. So let's see what all questions we'll be covering in this video. The first question, calculate the heat energy required to raise the temperature of 5 kg of water from 10 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius and the specific heat capacity of water is given 4200 joule per kg per Kelvin. Here you can see in this image that a container contains 5 kg of water and initially the temperature of this water is 10 degrees Celsius. So we need to find that how much heat energy we need to supply to raise its temperature to 50 degrees Celsius. So the first step is to write what is given and what needs to be found so that it becomes easy for us to solve the question. Mass is given as 5 kg. Please remember one important thing you have to check the units. These units of the quantities given should be uh, same as their units of the heat capacity or specific heat, heat capacity given in the question. Here the mass is in kg and the units of specific heat capacity also has their uh, unit kg. So we need not to do any conversion as the specific heat capacity capacity is given 4200 joule per kg per Kelvin. Now we need to uh, find the change in temperature. Change in temperature is T2 minus T1 that is final temperature minus initial temperature. Final temperature is 50 while the initial temperature is 10. So this will come out to be 40 degrees Celsius. So we can write the change in temperature as 40 Kelvin. Now you must be wondering that here I'm writing 40 degrees Celsius and here I'm writing 40 Kelvin. So one thing I would like to tell you that when we are considering change in temperature, then change in temperature per degree Celsius is equal to change in temperature per Kelvin. So whether we write change in temperature in degree Celsius or change in temperature in Kelvin, it's one of the same thing but we can only consider a one unit of temperature. So which one to choose? For that, again, you have to uh, analyze the question. In this particular case, the specific heat capacity of water uh, is given in terms of per Kelvin. So we will uh, take the unit of change in temperature in Kelvin. Now what needs to be found? As given in the question, we need to find the heat energy required to raise the temperature. So to find the heat energy required, we will be using this formula. Heat energy required is equal to mass of the substance into specific heat capacity of the substance into change in temperature. And we have all the three values. We have mass, we have specific heat capacity, and we have calculated the change in temperature. All we need to do is just to substitute the values to get the required answer. Here I will just substitute the values. Mass is 5 kg. The specific heat capacity is 4200 joules per kg per Kelvin and the change in temperature is 40 Kelvin. Now the units of the temperature that is Kelvin uh, will get nullified and the units of mass that is kg will also get nullify and we are left with the unit joule which is the unit for heat so 5 into 4200 so we will get the answer as 21,000 joules so this is the final answer next question an iron ball requires 5,000 joules of heat energy to raise its temperature by 10 degrees Celsius Calculate the heat capacity of the iron ball. You can see here an iron ball and we are supplying heat to this iron ball and the heat energy supplied to it is 5000 joules and on supplying this heat energy its temperature rises by 10 degrees Celsius. So we need to find the heat capacity of the iron ball. 
first of all we need to write it down what is given and what needs to be fined. The given value is 5000 joules and their change in temperature is given as 10 degrees Celsius or we can take it as 10 Kelvin because it is mentioned in the question that on supplying this heat energy the temperature rises by so this 10 degrees Celsius is the change in the temperature. And as I've told you earlier, that when we are taking difference of two temperatures, that means change in temperature per degree Celsius is equals to change in temperature per Kelvin. So we can uh, write either in form of degree Celsius or in terms of Kelvin. Both of them are correct. Now we need to find heat capacity. Heat capacity is denoted by capital C with apostrophe. To calculate this heat capacity, we require two formulas. First, heat capacity is equals to mass into specific heat capacity. Now, what is the need for this formula uh, in this question? The need is that in the formula of heat capacity, there is uh, no uh, heat required given and we don't have specific heat capacity in the question. It's not given in the question. To solve this problem, what we're going to do, I will write this formula in terms of specific heat capacity and then I will substitute the value in this formula so that I can uh, get the formula for heat required in terms of heat capacity. And in this way, it will become very easy for us to get the required missing value. So, specific heat capacity is equals to heat capacity upon mass. I will substitute the value here. Now the heat energy required is mass into heat capacity upon mass into change in temperature. The mass and mass will get cancelled so the heat energy required is uh, heat capacity into change in temperature. So if we rearrange that means if I bring a uh, change in temperature in the denominator then I can find the value of heat capacity. So the heat capacity will be heat energy required upon change in temperature. Heat required is also given in the question and the change in temperature is also given in the question. All I need to do is just to substitute the values. Here, heat capacity is equal to heat energy required upon rise in temperature. So that will be equals to 5000 joules upon our 10 Kelvin I can take. So if we calculate this, I will get the value of heat capacity as 500 joule per Kelvin. You can also write this as 500 joule per degree Celsius too. So here is the final answer. Part 1 ends here. For more questions you can view the second part of this video. Thank you.